All right, here's a quick little guide on how to run Deforum Stable Diffusion on Vast.ai. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go and get the notebook. So you can go to deforum.github.io, click on the notebook here, and then just go to File, Download, Download.ipymb. And now we downloaded it, and we could go over to Vast.ai and sign into the console. You're going to want to add at least $5 of credit so you can play around. And we're going to want to change our disk space to 40 gigs so that we don't run out of disk space. 10 isn't really enough once you've downloaded the model and, and all that stuff. So the next thing we're going to do is go to edit image and config. And these are all templates that we can set up. So some of these are already pre-configured, but you can change any of these templates. So one of these could be stable warp fusion. One of them could be deform and, and so on. So I'm going to choose this second one here, uh, it's the closest to deform. So I'm going to click select. And for the PyTorch version, we can just use the latest. We're going to want to check use Jupyter Lab interface is going to give us a much better interface for using the notebook. And I like to use this. It just makes the interface a bit faster, but it requires you to load a certificate in your browser. And uh, finally, all we have to do is paste in some stuff into this on start script. So this, this will essentially go ahead and install everything that we need before we even get into the instance so that Deform is able to run properly. This is going to be in the uh, video description. You can just paste it in here. And once you've done that, uh, just check. Yeah, we have 40 gigs. Click Select and Save. And now we're good to uh, rent a GPU. So I'm going to click uh, 1 and then do 3090. And we can sort by this and so I can I can get an uh, on demand one for 30 cents an hour if I do interruptible I could get it a lot cheaper but then that means that if anyone is willing to pay more than me they can kick me off of this uh, instance so if you pay uh, a bit more than the uh, than the starting bid chances are you'll get you know two to uh, six hours out of it which is pretty great and it'll be at a fraction of the price of uh, on demand and much much more affordable than collab collab is actually quite expensive now so I'm gonna go to on demand because I don't want to get kicked off for this tutorial so I'm gonna choose one this one is cheap but doesn't have very fast upload speed so this one has fast upload and download so I'm gonna go ahead and click rent go to our instances here and now it's going ahead and uh, starting the instance. So we'll give it a second, but generally it's pretty fast. All right, so now that the instance is running, we can go ahead and click open. And I obviously didn't set up my certificate correctly, so I'm just gonna bypass it like this. And the first thing I always do is go to dark mode. And yeah, this is our Jupyter Lab interface. So this is kind of the equivalent of what we're gonna be dealing with uh, in terms of collab. So we can open up a terminal here and install things, uh, additional things if we need it, but everything should already be installed. I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder. Uh, I'm going to call it DSD because I like to use uh, Stable Warp Fusion also, so I like to keep Deform Stable Diffusion in its own folder here. And I'm going to make a uh, DSD output folder as well and a models folder. And I'm going to go into my DSD and drag in the notebook that we downloaded earlier. So there we go. It uploaded it to this folder and we could just double click to open the notebook. So this is our um, Jupyter Notebook interface here. It's definitely not as fancy as Colab. So you're not going to get all those sliders and inputs that we had on Colab like this. So we're going to need to actually manually type them in uh, where they go here. So that's uh, kind of the uh, unfortunate part of this entire situation. There, There is a way to make UI elements like this in um, Jupyter widgets, but since this notebook is set up for Colab, we're going to have to type it in manually here. So it's it's not really that big of a deal once you get into it, but uh, it's just a bit of a difference there. So if we go, I like to go to view and do render side by side. So then it's going to get the output on the right side. And uh, first thing we have to do is change our paths here. So instead of slash content slash models, it's going to be a workspace slash models. So if we if we look in here, it seems like we're at the root level right here, but we're actually in slash workspace. So in order to get to this models folder, it's actually workspace slash models. 
And for the output path, I'm going to do workspace slash DSD output. And then finally, we're going to change the uh, Mount Google Drive to false. And uh, now we could just go ahead and do restart and run all. Probably didn't need to restart, but whatever, it's fine. And if I go to the uh, the outline view here, which is really nice, it will show kind of what step in the process it's at. So you see this this gray dot means that it's it's in the setup uh, process. So here it's uh, going ahead and setting up the environment. This is probably going to take about three minutes. So go and uh, make a cup of tea and uh, come back when it's ready. All right, so now that it's finished doing the environment, we can go ahead and log in with Hugging Face so that we can download the model. So I'm just going to type it in. And I'm going to use one of my tokens here. Don't worry, I'm going to change this token afterwards. And now it's going to download the model into our models folder. And it's probably going to take uh, three or four minutes, so might as well go make another cup of tea. All right, so now that it's uh, done doing its thing, it should start diffusing. And yeah, there we go. So we are uh, all up and running and diffusing now on vast.ai. So now that these have finished, we can just go ahead and download the output uh, just by right clicking and download current folder as archive. Um, I'll show you in a uh, future video how we can actually sync up to uh, Backblaze B2. And that will, uh, sync. we can use that to sync all of our outputs. We could also use it to sync everything that we just downloaded when we set up the environment and uh, downloaded the models. So we won't have to uh, do that every time and it'll all be done as soon as we start up the instance. But for now, that's uh, that's enough to get going. So once you've uh, downloaded your outputs and everything, you can just go and you're, and you're done with this instance. You can close it and go to the console and you can uh, you can stop it and uh, and then destroy it. When you destroy it, it will uh, delete all the data that you downloaded. So uh, make sure that you get all your outputs before you actually do this. And that's it.